Shukuru mele sita choka Hey guys, welcome to episode 7 of the Joyed Podcast season 3. We're so excited to be doing this three episodes to go and it's end of the season. Um we're so excited that you're still here, still having fun, still enjoying. Nice one. Now, this is episode 7 and we're about to come uh to an end of the episodes of the season. Now, you know you guys at the end of every season we normally have like a big gig and now we've done three sold out events now i don't yeah. know where we should take the other four. one do we do a four yeah. i think we should do it kasarani on your stadium <laughs> I, I'm, i'm a bit confused but this time around we're going to be doing something very different and unique yeah. so stay tuned for that we're going to be launching something amazing for the whole jared community yeah with this specific season we started with an event the one we did at anzana gardens in partnership with nation media Mediacom. so towards the end we're going to be doing something else so stay tuned for that um you need to subscribe to our newsletter now that's where the secret is at um guys who subscribe to the newsletter normally get uh extra extra points you get uh fast priority when the tickets are out or if we want to communicate Any something to you guys that we don't want to communicate to everyone that's the place yeah now today's episode is gonna be fire moto but before that i need to read some feedback from the previous episodes that we've done like the one we did with terence you guys loved it uh we have here somebody saying trevor is saying i learned so much from this channel this is real content we have uh marie mallet is saying wanjiru the dress the hair the makeup the glow you are laughter Leo Ume Mada. I try. I think that's your purpose. That's your PPI yeah. on this show. <laughs> really? Huh? You just need to look pretty no, and keep looking pretty. No, I pretty, contribute you know? a lot then. Take you do, that back. but that's your top KPI. No, you know? it's not. Um, on Twitter. I am more than my appearances, Ben. Okay, so you're a strong woman and smart and you're <laughs> more than up, everything, you know? Uh, on Twitter now, Twitter is normally where people say that it's full of bad vibes, but we get so much love on Twitter. We have Winnie who's saying, the Jared podcast will have great testimonies from wise listeners. Now, if you're a wise listener, you better subscribe to this channel in case you miss out on stuff. Now, today, we have a special guest. Now, this one is a blessed one, you know. Um, <laughs> she does so many things. I'm so excited. Uh, she's been part of the whole... You, you know, like when, we, when people started doing audio, uh, video podcasts, they started this, the pioneering of this space. So, Podcast ladies and gentlemen... Is. Vlog. Give it up for the one and only <laughs> Jules. <laughs> I'm so excited to finally have you on, Jules. We've been planning this for a minute. We have. Yeah, and this season could not end with, without us having you. So we are so, so excited that you could be here. How are you feeling? I'm very excited. Yeah. yeah. I'm very excited. I'm you guys' as fans. Yeah. I love your relationship. Your I love how Thank you've you. brought <laughs> your stories you. to, you. to, you. to social media. I mm-hmm. love how driven you are. Yeah. I feel like you're just expanding yourself and growing. growing. Yeah. I'm just like... Thank check you. Check Empesa Jules. That's <laughs> crazy. That's so crazy. You know, just check Empesa. But thank you so much for coming through. Um, yeah. Maybe before we even move any further, you have not one podcast. People mm-hmm. people normally have just one podcast. Yeah. But you were like, you know what? One is a bit too little for me. You have two, two podcasts. podcasts. Tell us about them. Yes. So I'm a member of a podcast, one over three members of mm-hmm. a podcast called It's Related, Related I, I Promise. promise. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, with myself, Kwam Box and um, Sharon, Sharon Mashira. Sharon, yeah. Yeah. Noni, Noni is also our silent member. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> she had to step down because I don't know if you've seen, she's in the UK yeah. working at the moment, but she's still part of the team, yeah. Yeah. still part of the group. She still supports us where she can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, and then I have a new podcast, mm-hmm. which I... Because all these projects I've been doing, mm-hmm. yeah. I always do them with people. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted to do something That's you. for you alone for now. For me, and I feel like it's now like completely reflective yeah. of, of me. Mm-hmm. And so I started this podcast called So This Is Love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, last year, I think it was October, we did mm-hmm. our first episode. Um, and it's one of those things I've been sitting on. I'd been sitting on for years mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I was like, who wants to hear my... Mm-hmm. Yep my staff who? like who yeah. you asking who i was asking myself <laughs> okay so i want to hear yeah, yeah. Yeah. a lot of self doubt yeah. and stuff and then eventually i just i just had the balls to do it yeah. Mm-hmm. and yeah so so this is love is a podcast about love mm-hmm. loss mm-hmm. redemption yeah. and all stories around that and we have a lot of people who come and share about how the love the breakdown of love in yeah. their mm-hmm. lives mm-hmm. has defined who they are yeah, yeah. Nice one. Mm-hmm. I, I think um, it's related. I promise. I listened to the episode where you did with Sharon. I think and Noni. Yes. It was about religion. religion. 
Ah, no, yes. yes, it was with, of faith. It was about faith. Why do young people not go to church anymore? Yes, yes. I listened to that on a Ah, uh, yes, update. and that episode was actually not with Noni. It was with um, what's it was her a name? gentleman. It, it was, was a, a lady, lady, and she's a f- very big filmmaker. What's mm. her name? CK. I don't know what mm. her name in. Yeah, but we call her CK. Yeah, yeah. um, loved it. Yeah, it was yeah, a really yeah. fun. Because I grew up in the church. Yeah. I didn't know. That's why I was like, "What jewels?" <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Oh my God! How do you I'm see me? How do you see me? So how do you see, so how do you see me? <laughs> no, no, no. I, um, it's the way when you guys were talking about Bapo and they had gone to Bapo a oh, couple really? of times. Yeah, you found yeah. relatability. So the like, story oh, is yeah. yeah. So that's, just it's not like oh my God, she talks to God. No, no, no. Yes, like that. yes. NPC, NPC Baptist Church. Yeah. I was. Man, scripture quoting, yeah, fire yeah. spitting. Yeah, yeah. I was in CU in high school. <laughs> I, I used to sing. Um, yeah. I really loved God. Yeah. I loved the idea that re- that religion presented. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, like I had said, I think where I had a struggle with is I, I was not able to foster a personal relationship with God yeah. mm. the way I wanted to. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of distractions in the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But it's like I went full circle. It's like now when I come back to God, I'm choosing him. I'm yeah. not doing it because, because we have to go to church. Like, 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 like I need him in my life. That's, yeah. that's what has forced me to come back to God. Yeah. And to be honest, even as I was coming to this podcast, I was yeah. thinking about you guys because you guys are very open about your faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was saying, I really miss feeling like God has my back. Yeah. I, 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 and I know that's me. It's not him. He's yeah. always yeah. there. Yeah. So I miss that feeling. Yeah. So I even had a little prayer this morning. I was like, oh, oh that's, that's, that's nice. Cook, 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 that you sang you know like mm. so that's why you need to check out the it's her really podcast as, as well we're gonna leave links in the description yeah i think i'm Jules a big fan amazing. of so this is love i yeah. think there's i've listened to almost every story i think i'm a sucker for love stories hence why i'm doing the joy <laughs> yeah, yeah. podcast talking about love <laughs> but i think i really and i can't wait for season two yeah i can't wait hopefully by the time this drops mm-hmm. it will come it, out it will be, when does this drop actually i think around 20th april if that still I, remains i should be up i oh, think week after next yes I, I should be up oh, okay, so that's then, perfect yeah we'll leave a link then in the description box so that you can check out so this is love season two and even season one if you mm-hmm. haven't watched it mm-hmm. all right so into today's conversation mm-hmm. we're talking about love languages so mm-hmm. jules we'll our give expert, you the honors our expert for the day <laughs> jules knows a lot about love languages <laughs> she studied different universities cambridge of she's given them data you know and reports i graduated so, from the university of the streets oh my oh, god, god. <laughs> yeah yeah you know phd so i was forced to look inward <laughs> phd because the streets will, force <laughs> will you. teach yeah. you. Yeah. Teach you. Yeah. As your phones were. Yeah. Our phones are on the streets. So we're gonna give you the honors. We've not seen the questions as okay. well. Yeah. Um, this is the first time, so you go first. You go first. All right. I don't know what I'm All looking into, guys. Podcast. We do this mm-hmm. every time to ourselves. We yeah. don't know what yeah. we're doing. I'll so I just one. pick one, yeah? Yeah, yeah just pick one. No, so if, if, if it has if all it those has parts, stuff, then they're they are you'll read all of them now. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. But then we can answer one by one. Yeah. Just to remind you guys to subscribe if you want to listen to the first question. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so go. I can just pick any? Yeah, start. All right. Um Here we go. Mm-hmm. Sweating so bullets. Yeah. Uh-huh. In your relationship experience, how easy has it been to find love? Wow, of course wow. that has to be the first question for me. <laughs> and Jules oh. took it. All right, you go first, then we'll do, Ben and I will answer it as well. Okay. Yeah. How easy okay. has it been for you to find love? Um, um, it has not been easy. Mm-hmm. I What inspired my podcast, actually, So This Is Love, is yeah. my failed relationships. Mm-hmm. More so in my 20s, because I think I really got to understand myself better in my 30s mm-hmm. yeah. but even early 30s those are, hey no actually 31 to 32 was a bit chaotic mm-hmm. yeah um but it has not been easy for me especially because i'm such a romantic mm-hmm. like and i thought the guy i was going to date straight out of high school is the one you're gonna is marry the one i was gonna marry <laughs> yeah me too um, the boy i was dating in, in in high school of course i was sa- so saved those days mm. we even had wwjd <laughs> oh, oh jesus, jesus dude, dude. <laughs> And then we had promise rings. Oh, with him? Like, yeah. matching WWJD? Like, WWJD, so they were green. And yeah. then it was like, we had, what they called weight rings or promise rings? Promise, promise rings. rings. The ones for not 
to, to promise not to have sex yeah. outside of my marriage. Promise ring. Promise ring. So me, I, I, I bought into the whole thing. Mm. And then I went to uni <laughs> and I met this boy. Mm. And but I have to say before I met this boy, I made a decision. Mm. I'm gonna I'm doing this. I told mm. God. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'm just remember you guys. I told God. I told God, give me two years. Yeah. Uh-huh. Two years to and mess then I'll up. Be back. <laughs> and for those two years, every day I used to have like a conviction. I'll be in a matter that I see yeah. John 316. <laughs> <laughs> spray painted on the like, like, God. Now. Not you now, know, Jesus. yeah. So I wanted to I wanted to experience the love I was fed mm. or, or, or I saw on TV. On TV. And the one on TV didn't look like the one in church. Yep. Mm. And yeah. I wanted the one for TV. TV. For romance. Yeah. And yeah. The, the, uh, kissing in the rain. Yep. Yep. And yeah, so anyways, um, I, my 20s was just looking. I think it was most, I could say the biggest theme in my 20s was figuring out my career and finding yeah. love. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. Um, and it, I was always, it was, it was a struggle because mm. I was attracted to very dysfunctional people. Mm. Bad boys. Bad boys. Oh, bad mm. boys. They they used to have it. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, and the good guys mm. always used to end up being my friends. Mm. Yeah. Because I was like, there's no chemistry. That's what yeah. good guys get. Yeah. It's one way ticket to the friend zone. <laughs> to the friend zone, which is, I mean, I used to re- decide, or like say, no, that's not true. That's not true. But then when I actually had an honest look backwards, I'm like, all these people who are my friends, they're such good, like husband material. Yeah. Like, but I couldn't see it then. I had yeah. to learn what I needed to learn. learn yeah. So love has not been easy for me. I will say that. Yeah. And it's not something... I like to wear a badge on, like mm. to talk about all the time, but yeah. it's, it's, it's sad that that is what I had to go through. Yeah. So I said, I, I know we're not, I wear a lot of cuss on this place. I can use an F, but then I don't say the full word. Yeah. yeah. I said, listen, mm-hmm. I have, the reason I have this knowledge or wisdom is because mm. of all the yeah. that you S- through that happened mm. yeah. so I said I'm, a Issa, I'm gonna Issa Rae the F out of my mm. life yeah. you know what Issa Rae did yeah. 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 she was an insecure black yeah. girl so she made insecure yeah. bl- awkward black girl yeah. and then she made insecure and then she know wrote about. you don't Issa know Rae? insecure uh, talk Sorry, to me guys. Joe oh, no, you, you, know, on you, don't know, you, you don't know insecure this bl- um, the show the show no he oh, wouldn't awkward know awkward black girl the, the no. YouTube series anyway when do you watch this we oh, no. live together. <laughs> I never see you. <laughs> okay, but it's over now, right? Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Over. It's okay. It's it's over now. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. But Isari is like really huge. She's okay. really huge. She's, she's a big really deal. She's, she's a filmmaker that started making YouTube. Oh, okay. Um, st- uh, ser- her series on YouTube, yeah. self-produced, low budget, and then. Okay. So I said I'm gonna use that as my because I feel like I I learned a lot, and then I then over 25 came, which is another YouTube channel that I'm on, and. I realized people really like when I talk about relationships. Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. And here we are. Yeah. Lemon, lemonade. Yeah. Love but it's it. It's because I guess it's it's very relatable. Like we tend to go through this uh, relationship phase by ourselves and we think it's only unique to, to us. To you. And then you realize it's literally so many other people 98% are, yeah. of yeah. Nairobi. Yeah. That's, one, That's huh? going through the same. How easy has it been? I think, I, I don't know how to answer that question because from where I sit, I'm still, I'm like you. I was dating, like, straight out of high school, I was dating for marriage. Yeah. Um, like, the first boy, I was sure we we're going to get married to this guy because, again, just like Jules, I'm a sucker for romantic <laughs> uh, stories. So I would, I understand, like, maybe outside looking in, you would think it's been so easy because I've been in this long-term relationship mm-hmm. with Ben. But from me, from where I sit, because I desire that kind of long-term commitment right off the bat, uh, it was consequence that because I was like mm. every guy was like this is not the one and mm. so I would fall into like like gosh yeah but then of course I found Ben um, and then it's been just bliss I'm happy from for you I'm yeah. happy for, I'm happy you didn't have to go through yeah what I was, because yeah. I was also like I'm a long term relationship person. kind of person I yeah. actually don't know how to do flings yeah I don't know how to let's figure things out mm-hmm. I'm like what are we doing I want to the long haul the long haul even if we're not like at 23 you're not looking yeah. for marriage then but yeah. like we are working towards, towards it I didn't want to sleep around yeah yeah. I do, mm. yeah yeah what about you Ben mm. oh mine has <laughs> not uh, I think before when Jiru I had one before but the rest were really uh, a huge joke, like, <laughs> a huge joke. Like, like I'm telling you and I think just like Jules I used to be attracted to chicks who never wanted me uh, so like I hit on a chick she likes me I'm like ah this is but you also now. into like yeah. the rebel kind of chicks yes those are the ones I yeah. like you know like you, me I'm going into church mm, then they're going into Dunda yeah, and you for like some weird reason I think I'd convert them you know and <laughs> yeah. say, ah, do the work of the Lord <laughs> it, used to, it just used to go south all yeah. the time so for me it was because I also used to feel, uh, uh, just be like like you guys, you know, I also wanted something long term. Mm. So I used to date for wife. Mm. I used to go no, so real eh? quick, you know, mm. probably even after a month or two. 
Yeah. And then after that, I didn't want anything serious until now, maybe my previous relationship. Yeah. And then now this one, which yeah. now ended up in marriage. Yeah. Oh. So it's not, it's been 50-50. Yeah. It's bad and good. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. I also started dating pretty early. Yeah. Yeah. How right. early is early? Like in high school. Okay. Like, yeah, in high school I was... But do you call that dating? That yeah, I feel like... was dating for me. Yeah, me, I don't know what was going on. I think we were just... Yeah, me, I don't consider like date. For me, that, uni, that, that was, that was yeah. a real relationship. Yeah, I feel like uni. when I, I was... That was my first relationship, three mm. years. And I was not in a serious relationship for almost 10 years after that. Yeah, I oh, feel like for me, uni, uni was more serious. Years, seriously, and then... After, after that, it was... Like, I would get into relationships, but I didn't consider anything that didn't last longer than a year. Mm. Like a serious like thing. Because it would be... Yeah, I didn't have a serious relationship till like ooh yeah. we'll call th- 31 mm. that's, yeah. that's when I went back into Dating. I can say I was with somebody for a year yeah. plus mm. and yeah. there are times I chose singlehood I was mm. like I'm done mm. but then after like I did that two years and then I came back into the game. I was like, I yeah. thought it's gonna be better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, the same. Myself. It's, it's the, the same, same stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, maybe there's something else here for me. Am I sorry yeah. the f out of this? Yeah. <laughs> I think for like my half of the university, I wasn't doing anything serious. Half of the university, I was serious, and then mm. after that, I met one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So not not that bad. All right. Should I go? Please. Number ten. What do you think is the greatest love song ever written and why? Ooh. Jules. Oh, what do I think? It's okay. Question. What do I think is the greatest love song? I need time because I'm like a sucker for love. Yeah, so, 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 so I have so many. So many. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm tempted to say a Whitney Houston yeah. or a Celine Dion. Yeah. Because yeah. they're classics. Yeah. But like, just say for real right now, what's touching you? Right now? I'm sorry. I'm like hosting. Yeah. yeah it's no, okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Have, no, 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 no. Have fun. Have fun. Have fun, fun, have fun with it. File, you know? I think right now, um, I'm really digging. I still, I think it's, I consider it our song, even though I don't think Ben thinks it's our song. Which song? But the song at our wedding, Kesho Kutua by Ethan, Ethan. Muziki. Mm, yeah. Oh, wow. I, I consider it like in this time, yeah. I really am digging that song. I haven't been able to listen to it post wedding because mm. I feel like I'll just cry. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. That's <laughs> you, Jules? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I have yeah, so many. It's question. a tough one, especially for songs. I can tell you films that for mm. me, just like, whoa, whoa. That's the next question, actually. That's the next question. Yeah. For songs, I can tell you, um, I, I, I know when I watch this in three weeks time, I'll be like, <laughs> I just said this one. But for now, let me just say top of mind. Yeah. I really, really love the entire album of Beyonce Crazy in Love. Mm. Ooh, that's so, a good one. And there's a song there where she's, it's like a ballad. This one where she's like, um, Hello? Not no. Hello. Mm. Um, if it's a Beyonce song, trust me, Wanjiru knows it. Uh, just the, sing the first for, note. Uh, is it the one I I'm in love with you? Oh, you uh, set me yeah, I free. You. I told you. I told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, dangerously yeah. in love. Yeah, dangerously with you. Okay, in love. Okay, yeah. love. So I really yeah. love love that era yeah. of Beyonce, mm. and I've just not been able to to get over but it. that, yeah. Um, oh, love songs. That's a very tough question, man. What's the greatest love, love song of all time? For you, yeah, for you, for you. I would love to I hear know, from a gent's perspective. You know, like I listen. No, no, I, I, I feel like I'm not the best person to ask because I listen to music. music. Oh, because uh, he's a, he's a musician. The, like the way the, the harmonies are done. Mm. So it's more like a job to nah. you. So sometimes I might list, I might love a song and I don't even really follow up on the content, but I really love the way it's arranged. Like that's, a, I guess now nah, it's time. Like I, like yeah. for me to give been, up. So okay, and, but that's not a love. Is it a love song? Really? It's How not. does it go? Which song is that? Piece of your emotion. emotion. Da, 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 Tracy Chapman. Da, 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 da. Yeah, what's yeah. that song? Yes. Is it a love song? It's 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 it's, it's, it's kind of it's, I literally I, go, to, wherever I, go, I, go, I, I just want you back for good. good. Want you back. Ooh. Okay, that's a good want one. Want you back. back. Cause I want you back. It does qualify for a love song. Yeah, yeah. It does. Tracy Chapman, do this. Go on Spotify. Yeah. This is crazy. I don't know if this is synchronicity. I really do believe in synchronicity. Just just synchronicity where you find things happen in your life and maybe you thought about them before or, yeah. and there's 
they can deeper purpose in yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. just me. Okay. <laughs> so Tracy Chapman, I, 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 I was going through a lot of anxiety last week, and then I was like, I want to listen to the music I used to listen to when I was a kid. Yeah, mm. yeah. I, I stole my dad's those radios for. Yeah, the the aerial. Aerial, yeah. Yeah, and use batteries at yeah. the back. And I, I, I put it in my room, and I used to listen to music mm. on Capital FM, yeah. getting ready for school. This is like class five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Mm. And they used to play a lot of that kind of music. Yeah. So I'm like, where is it? what's that music? Yeah. And then somebody was like, that's Tracy Chapman. Mm. I'm like, oh. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. So I went on Spotify right. and then I just did Tracy Chapman, Chapman. Radio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it gives you that vibe. That era of Nini. That songs. era and that vibe, that yeah. tempo, the oh, thing you're talking nice. about. So yeah. if you like that song, Love it. go on Spotify. Love we should and listen that. to it on that's the drive. Home. Playlist this week. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll put that one. That's a, a beautiful song. song. And yeah. this is last week. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. This is crazy. Yeah. yeah. I love it. All right. Um, what do you think is the greatest romantic film that was ever made? Romantic film. Um, I'll probably give my top two. Mm-hmm. For me, right, right at the top is um, the Bridges of Madison County. Mm-hmm. This is it was I Meryl. That one. Mm-hmm. Oh, I that, haven't watched it's it. It's such a beautiful love story, and mm-hmm. it's like, um, oh, you know it. Yes, yeah, Bridges of Madison it. County, Meryl Streep, and what's his name? Air Force One, not Air Force One. Mm-hmm. Mm. Hold on, Meryl. The, the, this is an old school actor yeah. in the same field as Catherine Zeta Jones's husband. Same era. I don't he know. did in the Line of Fire. Mm-hmm. Mumbai, do you know him? Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. Oh, Clint Eastwood. Okay, okay. Meryl yeah. Streep, Clint Eastwood, um, The Bridges of Madison County. I, I watched, watched that, that at seven, 16 or 17. Mm. And I was like, I'm too young to be watching this. Mm. But I, I watched it like five times that weekend. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll, I'll go watch it. I think for me, the greatest, I don't know if I could say greatest, but what comes to mind, maybe because I've been consuming a lot of YouTube clips around it, is the Bridget Jones series, mm. especially the first one, because I really love rom-coms. Yeah, yeah me too. So me I too. really love rom-coms. So I think I've been deep diving into Bridget Jones. I think so I need to go back to Bridget. I, I, yeah. the, the, rom, the rom-com era, I was deep in it. Mm, and it, I, it really made my knees about love. Um, like There's a question about that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ben, I genuinely don't know. Ben <laughs> doesn't watch romantic <laughs> like, movies. Like, like I've really tried. Like when you guys were talking, I was going through the files. I was like, do I say Vampire Daddy? No! That's trash. <laughs> okay. That's not a romantic film. The Beautiful. I can't remember watching it. I, I, I don't know, to be honest. I, think I, I mean, Titanic. Titan- no, you haven't watched it? You haven't I watched have, Titanic? I, I'm Titanic. Watching, but when I was like still in high school or something, I've not watched Titanic in a long time. I think for me, I don't know what's. I don't know. I don't have not watched nothing. Movie. Okay, I'm sorry, guys, on this. One. <laughs> what about the song or movie did you relate to? Have we talked about it? No. What about the song mm. or the movie? Re- I think for me, it's just the way you meet a guy. Mm-hmm. The guy doesn't like you at first, and then falls in love with you later, which is essentially like how Ben and I started out. Mm. So like we first met, and then we didn't hit it off. He wanted to go explore. I was still in love with him. <laughs> Not in love with him, but I liked him. And then now he came back. It's just like, yeah. Yeah. maybe it's what I relate to. Yeah. There's a point of relatability. <laughs> yeah. What do I relate to? Bridges of Madison County. Because this couple didn't end up together. Okay. Mm. I, hate to, I hate to spoil it for you. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't end up together. It was like... A, oh, really? Yeah. It was, it was set. This lady, she's like she was like a, 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 an immigrant, I guess, from... Eastern European country. Mm. She'd lived in, in America with her husband, like since they got married. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, now this is Meryl Streep, mm. and she's like Polish or something. I don't mm. know, but she speaks English, everything. And then, but then she we relocated to America, and she was living like in Ohio. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And she, she she was a good mom and everything, but she was kind of tired of her life, mm. and she's like I. And, uh, you know, mm. she didn't say it, but that's the energy you get. Yeah. And then in comes Clint Eastwood. He's this, like, photographer. Mm. Yeah. Um, and he's coming to this very quiet, quiet town. And they meet. Mm-hmm. And they fo- and the kind of love, that was a very intense, I think what I relate to, yeah. and which is very unhealthy, don't do this, children. Mm. Yeah. That intense mm. Mm. chemistry. Yeah. So, me and when I get that with somebody, I'm like, mm, red flag, I've <laughs> nope. been here before. <laughs> I can't see straight. Yeah, I don't. That nope. is TV. Yeah, don't fall for yeah. it. But yes, that's what I related to because that's what I thought love is, is. and 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 the the the, the tragic romance mm. of them not ending up together. together. There's yeah. a scene where she's in the car and she's yeah. about to open the door. Yeah. <laughs> And she starts crying. You guys just watch that film. I have to go watch it. You, you're gonna love yeah. it. Yeah. I feel like this is one of the most. This is one of the most intense podcasts we've done because we really went deeper into the the love thing, you know, and it's a beautiful thing. But I also 
figure that I need to go watch more romantic movies and maybe listen to more love songs from an emotional point of view. I listen to love songs, but not the way like when Jiri and Jules uh, listen to them. So that that was quite a challenge. You know, because the next question, it's interesting you, sh- you should say that because it says, do you think that the understanding you drew from songs or movies mm. gave you an unrealistic expectation of love? Oh, definitely. Definitely. There's a way... Like there's a way you're expecting uh, the, the the tension that you're talking yeah. about, for example, and that tension also like used to really it was always used to end up in tears for me, you know, like mm. the first time you made a check, and there's this um, tension Connection. in the air, and then now you've seen it in movies that maybe mm. she will go come back. They used to go never text me back. I mean, it was weird. It was like, and you're not following the script, sis, yeah. you know, <laughs> or you become too much of a yeah. bearing, and or maybe it's not reciprocated. So, yeah. The movies kind of give you a vibe that's not entirely true. Yeah. Sometimes. I think for me, it was the expectation that he'll always fight for you. Like, he'll come knocking on your door and saying, like, I want this for you. Like, you know, after you standing that, yeah, 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 like, raining, you know, yeah. like this. Yeah, it's raining, he's pouring. Like, you know, that kind of... When he realizes yeah, what he's lost. That kind of romantic... <laughs> love. <laughs> And then you're in a relationship and the guy, his way of conflict is that he wants time away from you. Mm. He's not the one to run and knock the door Mm -hmm. and fight for you. He just needs time to to, mm. to, to process, process everything. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's just that kind of like, it will always be, I'll always fight for you or, yeah. or I'll always be here knocking on your door with the rain pouring in my face, singing mm. you songs, mm. you yeah, know? Even Would you like that? I can. I, I don't can, think no. it's practical. You you can, I think one stuff. time is okay, but yeah. every time we have a fight, you come with this dramatics. I'm like, I like chill. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Like we need to buy milk and bread tomorrow. <laughs> so like, don't waste the money doing that. Yeah. Leave the roses for another day. Yeah, yeah. So I think it gave me that expectation, and I had to quickly learn that love is not like real love is yeah. not like in the movies. Yeah, yeah. Um, one hundred percent romantic films mm. and music gave me a false idea of love mm. and it is a a very unrealistic skeleton mm-hmm. it gives you maybe i'd say 10 percent of what love is mm. yep. um once the song is over and the film is over even in a relationship it's mm. like this the day-to-day real life of being in a yep. relationship mm. yeah um discovering this person's weaknesses mm. can you deal with it yeah um discovering how you contribute to the BS in the mm. relationship and owning it. Yeah. Um, the, the times when you just don't even want to be around this person. Yeah. And yeah. then the cyclicness of love. It's yeah. like we're, being, we're good. And then there's a time, we, like there's a month, hey, we're going through a rough patch. And then yeah. you're back and it's like nothing. You know, it doesn't show you that clearly. Mm. Yeah. So it absolutely did. Yeah. It absolutely did. It gave me a warped idea of what rom- well, yeah. romance is. Mm. Yeah. And... Yeah, I grew up in that era of so many rom coms. Rom coms, yeah. R and B. You know, I was asking myself where the, where are the R and B artists? That time yeah. R and B artists have well, dominated like, yeah. generations. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean girls and confessions was top of oh the my charts. God, yeah. Man. Yep. Yeah, so so one hundred percent. I think they they they, they sh- gave me but then now because of realizing oh this is not how love is mm. and I think you can only know what love is when you're in a healthy relationship. L- relationship yeah. I agree. When you're in a healthy relationship, then that's when you're able to be like, oh, this is love. This is realizing, because I, I was talking to you guys earlier, telling mm. you healthy, in a healthy relationship is when I was able to see my... Yeah, your, toxic. My yeah. toxic traits. Yeah. 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 I was like, no, you know me, I'm understanding. I hear yeah. you. And then you date somebody who is just stable and healthy and, yep. and you realize, oh, snap, girl, yeah. you, you need to work on yourself. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. interesting, interesting. Next question, Psycho. Uh, this is number nine. Uh, sing this out if you know the song. <laughs> okay, are you guys ready? I'm sure you guys yeah. will get it. You guys are like... Go. Uh, L is for the way you look at me. O Whoa. is for the only one I see. V, v is, is for very, the very, very extraordinary. extraordinary. E, e is, is even for... more than oh. anyone you adore. I know this song. What is L it? is oh. for the, the way you make yeah. me feel. Oh. <laughs> oh. Is so the only one I see. Because yeah. the lyrics, the like worshiping church. Is very, very extraordinary. extraordinary. It's so nice. Are you gonna sing Jules like your voice is so Love it. You don't. Okay, move on to the question. Because when I was an L, I was like, I was a first class. <laughs> no, I'm in the class. 
Oh, that's, 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 that's living the life. I can tell the person who wrote this question is, yeah. is an old soul. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go. Uh, that is Frank Sinatra's acronym for love based mm. on your relationship experience. What's mm. your ac- acronym for love? For you guys so at home as well. What's yeah. your acronym for love? Oh, I need love? to think about that How word. How do you put L O V E? I don't know. I need time to think about that one. Oh, so like we we yeah. How we, how how would you? How is L a different way L- to say yeah. for Jules now? Yeah, L O V E. Lots of vibes and emotions. <laughs> That's really bad. That's for you. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> it actually works. No. L V E. L is for the way you look at me. L is for. Last, which is what I felt before yeah. I knew you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. O is, is for. Oh, I, I, this is not for this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what O is, girl. But um, okay, O is for <laughs> orange juice in the morning because uh-huh. that's what I want you to uh-huh. make me. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, v, v is for. Gosh. This one needs time. This one needs time. This one this really one need can time. we come? Can we come to the hard times? The hard times, yeah. And the toxic. And the toxic <laughs> traits. Yes. Oh, everyone yeah. comes with yeah. their oh, yeah. yeah. And E is every day I will choose. Oh. This relationship. Can, can you remember what you just said? From L to O. L, L is last. O is orange, orange juice. juice. And how we turn oranges into <laughs> oranges. Oranges into oranges. Uh, v, <laughs> lemon to lemonade. V, v is, is for, for the vi- vi- Venom. 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 E is for every, every day. day. Every choose. day, every okay. day. It's a choice. Ben? Okay. Um, what about you, Wanjiru? Let's, let's, let's no, be No, I need time to <laughs> think about it. It's like writing vowels. Yeah. yeah. L. Um, v? L is for... L is for love. Mm. What? Uh, so original. Yeah, yeah like so, so deep. <laughs> I don't know. I think you can play around with it. Do you have to start with the L O V E in that order, yeah. or you can just yeah, that I think would you form can, another word. Like you no, like you e, can play v, around with it evil. as long as it's as long as it's the same. No, no, you have to start. With, oh, we can come back to this later. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. all I'll right. Come back to that question later. Okay, Jules. Okay, nice you're up next. L. Drum roll, please. Oh my God, this is a like long A B C one. D. I'm Let's gonna go. answer. So I think moving forward, I'm just gonna answer point point. Okay. So okay. that we don't <laughs> see here. Perfect, perfect. Okay. The only thing we never get enough of is love, and the only thing we never give enough of is love. Oof. A. Ben and Wanjiro, in your relationship, is this true? Do you think that you could both give more love in the relationship? Oh, definitely. Definitely. One thousand percent. I think just last week we were saying that I think Ben and I we've. The last few weeks, I think this first quarter, we were relating so much as roommates and as work colleagues, Mm. as opposed to just partners, husband and wife. So it it felt like there's just that general love I have for him. And of course, I want to see him win. But that intimate, romantic love, Mm. we haven't taken enough time to foster it. So I think this Easter break, we have some fun activities to just rekindle that kind of love. Yeah. 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 You think about Christ, right? (laughs) Amen. No, I just want to think about you. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. B. Is the answer, t- if the answer to this is yes, mm. yeah. it was in your case, mm. in your estimation of your partner, what do you think is stopping your partner from giving you more love? What's stopping my partner from giving me more love? Oh, it's actually uh, the hustle, the Nairobi hustle. Yeah. Mm. You're too busy, too busy. By the time it's evening or by the time you're having time together, you really want to rest. You mm. know? And I think with love, it requires a lot of intentionality. Mm. I think love also is work. So sometimes when you've just been too, you've been carrying other things for too much, uh, for, for a while, mm. whenever you put all those bu- buttons down, you just want to rest. And I think you, you, it needs to be intentional in your schedule. Yeah. Like you need to like schedule that you need to do some of these things. Together. And yeah. what if you're not in the mood? Like how do you get past that? Like you can schedule it. Like let's say... Mm. I don't know if you talk about this on your podcast, yeah. but let's say you schedule intimacy. Because yeah. mm-hmm. um, I feel like that's one of the things when you're dating mm. and you're both on the grind, you yeah. just can go weeks and you're like, bro. Mm. So what if you, have you ever been in a point where you're like, we have to schedule it, but then you're still not there. How do you get past that? I think we, How do you get past the thing that's the, stopping you even though you've set the intentions? I think sometimes... For Ben and I, I think, if I could Please. answer, I think for us... 
we communicate a lot. Because, like, for me, I think, as I was saying, last week it got to a point where I felt like I was experiencing Ben in so many other different ways mm. except as my partner and as my husband. And I felt like I was missing out on the Ben I fell in love with. You know, we, we are either just ever talking about work, responsibilities, or things we want to do. It's never just, like, the fun, easy Ben that I fell in love with. And so... It got to like a come to Jesus moment. We need to talk. Mm. I miss you. I miss I miss my partner. Oh, so yeah. I think it's just that constant. I think that's how we get over it. What do you think? Yeah, there's that. But also I've gotten to understand that sometimes you have to do it even if you're not feeling like because yeah. you don't know what the other, maybe the other person still wants it. Yeah. yeah. And I think if you sit around and wait for you to have psych to do it. Yeah. Do you see one of those where it's like, let me get into it and then I'll get into it when I'm in it. Yeah, yeah. I feel it like, can yeah. be that. It yeah. can be that. Um, but also I think you have to force yourself uh, to to intentionally also want it. Right. You know, just don't have to wait for the psych that maybe I love her this way when I have the psych to do that. Maybe you'll never do mm. that. Especially for people like me who mm. sometimes I tend to be a bit cash and non-emotional. Yeah. I have to really... Um, be intentional. Be intentional and 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 sh and keep myself accountable that I need to do this thing even if I, I don't feel like doing it at the moment. Do, okay. do this for her. Yeah, I think it that's works how for we, you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, happy about that. Yeah, Jules, mm -hmm. in your relationship experience, do you find that this holds true? Are there relationships that you could have given more love and potentially had a different outcome? Oof. Okay, oh, We're going deeper. That's good. We're going deeper. Do you? No. Um, I think the relationships that ended mm -hmm. needed to end. Mm. And I don't think that giving more love would have saved them, would have saved them. But maybe perhaps giving more love to myself and mm. I know it sounds selfish, but I feel like in my experience, I feel like um, I, if I give more love to myself, I'd have probably even avoided certain relationships, certain, certain relationships yeah. because they have failed. Mm. Um, but there is one that comes to mind mm -hmm. where I feel like I let somebody go because I was not ready mm. for the kind of authentic love that they were offering me. Mm. I was much you were not younger. There. Yeah, I was much younger. And I would say that's the one that got away, but I still don't feel like me giving more love mm. would have changed the outcome. I'd have still ended up um, sabotaging mm. it in some way. I needed to learn what I needed to yeah. learn at yeah. that time. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about if they had given you more love? I'd have say, I'd have been you'd be smothering me. Mm. I, I yeah. Like I told you, I wasn't ready for mm. it. So you would I don't still... think you cannot out love if somebody's not feeling you, there's no amount of love you can give somebody for them to love you the way you want them to love mm. you. They have to love you the way they want, want to love you. Want to love you. you. Yeah. Yeah, and, and there's, there's something that I also get this question a lot from some of my boys. Like, um, sometimes when you love a chick too much, um, sometimes it's like you're repelling them away. Yeah. Is that a phase or is that a... It, it's, it's only a phase a if you learn from it. Mm -hmm. Because f I'm, I, I, when, if we talk about attach, attachment styles, yeah. I am, I'm an anxious preoccupied, mm -hmm. which means that I tend to be attracted to a lot of avoidance. Mm -hmm. okay. People who don't give me too much because mm. it's going to be too much. Mm. But I have learned to love when somebody is loving me before I'd be like, oh, friend zone. Mm. But the person who I have to do a little bit of chasing, a little mm. bit of, um, do you love me? Do you see me? Do you see how yeah. dope I yeah. am? Yeah. Like for you, that's, the one, you <laughs> that's the one I want. And that's horrible, you yeah. know? But I didn't, I had to figure mm. that out. Yeah. So I saw a TikTok video by a psychologist, therapist, or something um, that was talking about the anxious avoidant trap. And this goes back to attachment styles. I'm an anxious preoccupied person, which means you can read about it. And when we are, there's a, there's a very combustive relationship with anxious, preoccupied, and avoidance. And it's very explosive in the beginning. Um, and that's what we usually label as chemistry. But those relationships are the worst, they're toxic. Avoidance are told date secures um, and um, anxious preoccupied are told also date secures. Now, it's not to say, all this to say that chemistry for me is still very important. I 100% I, I believe it needs to be there. But the one that is, the one that is so consuming that you're not even able to notice somebody's red flags or you're ignoring them, um, that's the one I'm like, mm, we need to put a pin on this. 
Um, so I think attraction is still very important. I think feeling like, oh my God, I'm being swept off my feet. I think it's important, but it's not, or, or rather I, I still want it, but then nowadays I look at it with a, a critical eye because I need to be able to peel the layers and still have good judgment about this person. And before I didn't have that, it was just like, that's what I'm looking for, yeah. And um, um, yeah, so I, I wouldn't say it's a phase. You know, you can never, you can go through life never learning the lesson you need to learn. Okay. And yeah. It's not okay. a phase. Yeah. But then there's some people who come out on the other side and they realize, oh my gosh, um, this is the kind of person I need to be. Um, and I don't want to use the word attracting, but yeah. attracted to. Mm. This yeah. is the kind of somebody who is wholesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Somebody who is enriching to my life, and I need to learn how to accept that and mm. not push it push away. Push them away. Yeah. Because it's very automatic to be like, yeah. and it doesn't come off as pushing, it just comes off as almost being like now they're avoidant in the relationship, mm. which which is not good. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. All right. okay. So it's more of a personality kind of thing to some people. Yeah. And then maybe they can also get out, they can also grow that season and move on they to another can. season they where can. they want something they else. Can. Okay. I, and I feel like if, if you have to, um, I, I, this is just my opinion. If, yeah. if, I feel if you have to be so very strategic mm-hmm. in how you give your love to somebody, like, mm-hmm. oh, let me not do too much because she'll... Oh, that's already... Mm-hmm. That, that is not the person for you. For you. Okay. Uh, I, in my opinion, it's going to take... You, you can still be that person. Mm-hmm. It can work. Eh? Mm-hmm. But I feel like there'll be a, there's a lot of work. There'll be an uphill task. Mm-hmm. So the question is, is that person willing to mm-hmm. take that uphill with you? With and you, are you willing to? Yeah. Because yeah. you might get now to the top and there's... It's, it's yes, it's yeah. euphoric, but it's mixed with resentment. Yeah. You have to change who you are for this person, how you, who you want to love and give. So it's, and it's, it becomes toxic love. Like there's love, but it has so much yeah, attached so to it. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. And there's one final question. Mm-hmm. What do you think stopped you at the time from giving more love? I think for me, it's just the hustle. Like, I guess, I, again, I think I experienced Ben in so many ways that sometimes husband comes last because it's the toxic nature of Nairobi. You know, mm. you're always chasing the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. And I, it doesn't help that I'm chasing it with my partner. Yeah. So sometimes you just experience him as a work colleague, as a roommate. We are just, we have to make sure like the bills are paid and everything just, it's so fun. It becomes so functional mm. as opposed to, the real reason why I really, why, why I really like him, you know? Mm. So I think it's just the hustle mm. that yeah. got in the way. Yeah. Okay. What about For you? me, I'd say it's the um, COVID, the one in Ukraine. <laughs> no. No, but I'd say it's the same thing with, with, I think one of my biggest problems is routines. I'm very attached to routine. Yeah. I like routine. I like, um, it's like I worked in the army or something, you know, like I, I wake up, I, when I wake up, this is what I do. So sometimes when the routine is more about work, my mind, I have to force my mind to, to break, to take to a break, break from that okay. routine. And to be very intentional about my something marriage, else. you know, yeah. and, and actually make one you happy, buy her something, you know, yeah. uh, schedule a dinner. Like the other day I just tell her, yo, by the way, I need to book you for this day. <laughs> yeah. We're going out, you know? And that's something that I had to be very intentional in, in doing, you know, because mm. if it was up to, Sometimes if it was up to me alone, I can forget this, mm. which is yeah. not uh, nice. Yeah. yeah, I guess that's just the weakness of that strength because yeah. routine, mm. I think, is for you, you, I would be very happy to be yeah. somebody where I know they have a routine and you're not just wishy-washy because mm. I, yeah. I am the one who floats in the sky mm. and yeah. I don't know, maybe mm. I don't know if I'm feeling it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You need someone like this to be yeah. like, listen. This is how it works. <laughs> where I'm anchoring yeah. you down. Yeah. 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 But then now it works also on the negative, yeah. the other side. It's my turn. Oh, Cycle. it's your turn. Okay. You You've taken your question? Yeah. Okay, let's go. In your reflection of your life, who taught you about love? In my reflection of my life, who taught me about love? I think for me, it's what I've seen my parents. Mm. Um, I think everything that I mirror about love, how I love Ben, how I like to model even like what we do in terms of the relationship, I've seen it a lot with my parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What for you guys, and then we'll do what do they teach you and how do they teach you? Who's taught me about love? Can you say, okay, of course my folks, but even the, my circle of friends okay. mm. from, from you, what you see other people uh, experiencing and you mm. also want to experience that. Mm-hmm. So there's that, there's friendships, of course. Um, yeah, I think my circle of friends and people around me. Okay. okay. What about you, Jules? Who taught you mm. about love? I think everyone 
is taught about love at the beginning by your caregiver. Yeah. It could be your parents, your adopted mm-hmm. parents, whatever. That's where you first learn about love. Yeah. Yeah. And that is where the blueprint of your attachment styles mm. and whatever is are created. Yeah. Yeah. The ages of zero to seven. Now, after that, I learned about love through music and TV. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a very, very trashy romance lo- novels in high school. <laughs> I used to have my biology book outside and then and inside, then I'm like, done it. It. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Okay, but okay. I passed bio, I got yeah. to B plus. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I loved bio. Um, then over time, it has been life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Experience, Experiences. Um, and, and, and literature, books. Mm. So... So life experience, books, and then you learn, and then you, you and people. So mm-hmm. the relationship, hey, actually. Mm. The people, I take what it you back. see. Yeah. People. You know what's talking about re- love, like, mm. properly is the relationships that I've been in. The failed mm. relationships that okay, I've yeah. been in. I, yes. That's, that's true. And then you learn how to adjust, and you're like, okay, this is the tactic. And then, mm-hmm. and within these tactics, you can have them, but then they only serve you for, like, two yeah. years. Yeah. So it takes a lot of um, and learning, yeah. and learning, yeah. and that oh. also takes its own breaking yeah. down a paradigm that you have set up in your brain. It's so, mm. especially if a relationship has lasted for so long, mm. and then you've learned so much from it, and then now it's not working anymore. It's not serving. Yeah. Then uh, it's just actually yeah, for long term relationships because you'd be like, no, but she used to like yeah. it when I when I when I whisper uh. in your ear, and yeah. I, I actually saw a post recently where this girl was like, we need to normalize to- in relationships talking about how certain things have changed. Mm. I used to like when you rub my feet, I don't mm. anymore. I don't like it anymore. Um, I, I used to like this kind of cuddles. Mm. Yeah. I don't like them anymore, but this is what I like now okay. because things change. Mm. And, and, and people change. People change. Um, um, desires change yeah. and expand. And, people you know, grow as yeah. well. People grow and, you know, yeah. yeah. So when you said like you learned the love mostly from your folks, did you yeah. talk about relationships with your folks? Not really. And I think because the question here is, is how did they teach you about love? I think mm. it's really just through observing Obs- how they used to. Because I realize, like, my parents have worked together their entire life. Yeah. Um, they spend 99% of the time together. That's how I think love should feel like or should be like. And I think I found that we're doing that with Ben. Not that it was forced or anything. I think they genuinely enjoy each other. And I found, like, naturally, my relationship with Ben has progressed that way. Yeah. Like, we work together. We spend so much time together. Um, I think I, 99% of my time is with Ben. Mm. Yeah. So I think it's through just a lot of, I think one of even the goals I have for myself this year, um, I really want to now start Wanjiru, enjoying Wanjiru by herself. I think I need it. And I remember sometime last week I, I sat with myself, Ben doesn't even know. I was like, whoa, I because we were talking with a bunch of my friends and they were like how they enjoy their own company and they enjoy being by themselves. And I was like, I really now want to get to that place. And I remember I was bashing myself because I'd spent so much time building on our relationship with Ben. But I remember I caught myself and I was like, it was that season. That I needed, was the season. Yeah, yeah, I needed to focus on my romantic relationship. And now that's it's stable and I'm happy with where it's at. It's now time to... Yeah, yeah, do a little thing for yourself. Of yeah. Yeah. Spend time, spend yeah. time by yourself. So <laughs> I think <laughs> you're going to crash every <laughs> one of you. Shidaako, so how, what do they teach you about love and how do they teach you about love, you guys? Through experience, actually. Yeah. Uh, I, think I think I already answered yeah, that. Through yeah, through experience. I'd say the same thing as Jules. Um, yeah. I think after you've dated so many people, you start learning. So yeah. You start observing. Kianza kuenda, if you kianza kuona una reply after two days. Mm. That's not going days, so very nice. Somewhere this is going. Yeah. The head is not there anymore. Definitely. Yeah. You're forcing it. Um, I think one thing I've seen when I talked about my parents and what I emulate, I think my parents are such a unit and I admire that in how they raise. Like they're really just, they speak in one voice, one language. Um, they work together. Um, there's just a lot of like a unit and I really admire that about them. One thing I would not, I saw and I was like, "Mm, maybe it's the gender kind of thing. I mean, coming from the age that they come from, the generation that they come from, the man has to be, you know, doesn't do a lot of housework and all that stuff. Though my dad tries, but you could see it's like a real struggle for him. (laughs) But I think think that's one thing. I would want more of a collaborative thing at home, um, in the home front. Um, so I think that's one thing. I have myself, yeah. number yep. seven. So given neither of you have children, for this question, we'll use your imagination and understanding so far. Mm. Okay, Barak. Uh, in your understanding, what, why do you think certain elements of intimacy are defined as making love? What? 
What? Yeah, I don't understand that question. So, uh, in your understanding, mm-hmm. why do you think certain elements of intimacy are, def- are, are defined as making love? Okay, so the B one is based on your definition above. Do you think it will be fair to say that children are the ultimate culmination of love? Mm. So it, it's building up. Mm. So do I do I start again? I don't get part A. Jules, do you? Not it, yet. It's because it's connected to part B. Yeah. So, um, in your understanding, why do you think certain elements of intimacy are defined as making love? Mm-hmm. Then B, based on the definition above, do you think it will be fair to say that children are the ultimate culmination of love? Oh, I get it. Yeah. Yo, that's complex, man. That needs a whole <laughs> thesis. Needs a research paper, a study group. Yeah. Okay. All, all, I PhD can only, and all. I don't know if children are the ultimate form of love. Because aren't there couples who don't have kids mm. and they seem so in love and they don't want Do kids? Do you know them? Or that's what you hear? Have you that's seen? That's what I hear. Have no. you seen? No. I mean, I want to speak from experience. experience. I have seen... I can have, you seen a childless, have you seen a childless couple in their senior years? Movies. Exactly. Movies. I haven't either, but I'd like to see mm. because I'm not sure where I stand with kids. Mm. And I know the clock is ticking. You guys don't need to remind me, okay? <laughs> I'm don't one remind me. I know it is top of mind. <laughs> yeah. but, um, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> but I have seen single people who have no interest in marriage, who have no interest in kids. They're happy to stay a single life. I know such people how Does do it mean I, that they'll they never they experience I wanna, love? I wanna, I wanna see those people mm. in their like sixty, yeah, older. Not one. now, not now. When you're like, this is my life. I don't want anybody to. Mm. And it's mm. like, I, 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 I f with that. Mm. But then it's like, where at sixty, seventy, do you have some regrets? Are we regrets? still happy? Yeah. With Are you? The do you feel? How does Christmas look like for you? What's mm. Easter? Yeah. You know, because for me, Easter and Christmas and all holidays family. is family. Thanksgiving and so all that So if you stuff. don't have that, because now I've started <laughs> piggybacking on my married friends' mm. plans, and I'm like, I'm not going to be there. Fun auntie mm. drinking in the corner on Christmas. <laughs> no, no, thank you. <laughs> I, I need my own unit, guys. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I was calling my best friend. I'm like, what are you guys doing for Easter? Oh, we are going to Nyeri. We. I'm like, can I come? <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna be me, girl. Love it. That's a good point. Julia has made that. I would love to see someone in their 60s. Same. Yeah. Same, and, same. and give an authentic. Not. Tell us what you think we want to hear. Because I yeah. want you to be like, I, I'm lonely, but I am happy. Like, what is the pros and cons? And the cons. Like, I'm happy that I have yeah. this, but maybe I wish I did this. Yeah. Or I'm completely happy, but sometimes I wish I, I, had, wish I had a, a child. Now, yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. That would be good. If you know someone who would be happy to yeah. tell us. Yeah. Or if you yeah. had someone. Be, the three of us yeah. want to know. <laughs> Based on the definition above, do you think it would be fair to say that children are the ultimate culmination of love? We've answered this. So I wanted to ask you one, so for mm. the people who are saying that they would not want to get married, they don't want to experience kids, so how do they experience love? And I'm asking this out of curiosity. I think the ones I've spoken to have gotten to such a place of, like, they're just okay with themselves. They love themselves. They enjoy their own company. I know of one who says, like, even living with someone, like, even if they were to enter into a lifetime partnership, mm. it's not the one for living together. Oh, they live separately. They live separately. I've heard of that. So oh, it's, that's a thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Living and in one space can really yeah, leave some people. Yeah, like you can live separately. Like, you live, like, in the same apartment block, but you, you're you dating, like, you know, one day, like, you're dating. It's like you're dating forever. And okay. I think, like, they've, yeah, it's that dating forever thing. And I think they've just, and I, it's not to say that it doesn't come with its lonely times especially like christmas holidays but i think they've made peace with that they've chosen they've made this decision they know it comes with that and they still mm. choose okay yeah so question c is based on the above premise do you do you, do you then think that you have experienced love at its peak i i can't say i'm only what 30 i can't speak i don't know if i have mm. me too i, I don't, don't know. know i don't know if i have but um, I don't know if, if, if like kids change the whole dynamic of love. I don't know. I'd love to experience that. Yeah, Maybe yeah. when that time comes. Yeah. So at this point, I can only use my imagination. Yeah. But yeah, because I also hear, because I also, from, from my friends who have kids, you know, uh, for them, it's like their kids become their, their world. Yeah. You know? And at that point, there's a way they talk about kids. Like um, now they understand the true meaning of love because now they have a kid and all that stuff. I, I don't, don't know. know. Maybe until I experience it, that's when I'll know. The Come back to, to find out. Yeah. <laughs> Let's pin that. We, put, we need to put that in a capsule, a time capsule. Yeah. Shall I? Is it go? Me? No, yeah, it's you. 